Hello everyone and welcome to game three of the After Hours Gaming League quarterfinal matchup between on the blue side Amazon Hamazon and on the red side again Workday. This is <laughs> as we see Weekday uh, affectionately named here in the actual game title here uh, for this uh, lobby but it actually is Workday here. <laughs> Um, first band coming out is going to be that Vi. Band's unchanged so far for this Amazon team. A little confident in that, respectful of the Vi potential coming out from Workday, and that Sejuani again, of course, going to be instantly banned out here. Not going to risk that being first picked away. As of course, Amazon will not uh, hesitate to do so. That's going to be the Kha'Zix. Absolutely agree with that band. The Kha'Zix showed up huge for Workday in Game 2. So a lot of respect being shown to that potential on Kha'Zix here as Anivia is banned out. By Workday here. Let's see what the final band is going to be coming out from Amazon here. And it will be Annie being banned out. So what does that mean as far as Amazon is concerned with their first pick? Might me see that Jinx coming out to try and first pick that away. Of course, Jinx did show up very strong in that last game. And there's a Scion ban going to be coming out again. Respecting that Scion jungle we saw earlier in the series. But now here's the all-important first pick. And it's no, it's going to be Gragas. Going to be first picking away that Gragas. Game 1, of course, we did see that Gragas coming out, and then it was banned away in Game 2. Some respect there being shown to that Gragas potential. Now it's going to be immediately picked up, but of course, here's what happens when you first pick that Gragas away. That Jinx is going to be hovered out here. I would be very surprised if she isn't going to be locked in here, especially after she showed up so strong in that last game. Of course, it always helps when you get first blood on a hyper carry to make her look really strong. <laughs> but uh, with that LeBlanc cover as well, now that is going to be a Thresh switch up here as that is locked in. And we will be seeing a Thresh Jinx bot lane coming out for this uh, workday team here. We'll see if that Jinx can get as good of a start as she got last game. And again, most likely going to be locked in. Looking for the 2v2 here against that Thresh with those black shields and spell shields. No, actually, as soon as I say that, of course, going to opt to change it. Uh, possibly a Janna. A little bit stronger disengage for the team that would certainly be helpful with that Gragas, of course, uh, being able to uh, use that uh, Janna just for disengage, uses the Gragas fully for engage opportunity there with that Sivir ultimate. Couldn't be able to position people, and we will see if that Sivir pickup uh, is a hint towards a later Hecarim pickup in the top lane. with that Trinity Force spike coming out in that mid game that might exactly be what this Amazon team wants on the blue side to ensure that they can hit that momentum and spiral out of control as needed the team will hover coming out for the good cheers of all you people at home watching the stream <laughs> uh, for that Pantheon over that uh, possible Pantheon general we'll see if that Pantheon does get locked in here, along with Teemo. Actually locked in is the Teemo! Oh my god, actually locked in is the Teemo! Okay, hold on, hold the phone, people! <laughs> We're seeing that Teemo locked in. Uh, at this point in the game, I mean, I, I wasn't totally dismissive as it is 
theoretically possible, Gragas and Sivir, of course, people who do rely on uh, auto attacks uh, for a lot of consistent damage. But wow, it, locking in that Teemo, totally blind as to what uh, lane he'll be going into. A very confident Teemo pickup. Um, wow, I, I'm just so impressed here. That Mundo going to be snagged up here for the top lane. Possibly for the jungle uh, as well, actually. And as I see a, a pick here, or a notice coming out, there we go. Teemo is a proxy. Woo! Okay, I was very surprised by that Teemo pickup. That is actually a Maokai. Alright, good. That, whew! I, I was a very bold pickup into a blind lane matchup. But no, that is going to be a Maokai <laughs> going into the top lane here. Um... But regardless, uh, that Pantheon is locked in. So we're going to see, again, coming from uh, this Workday team, a composition that looks to get uh, some early kills and snowball, press on that early game, try and see if they can find a weakness for this Amazon team here. Uh, and if they can capitalize on a weaker early game, they can build momentum into the early game, or into the mid game, I should say, and create an opportunity for that mid game to get... Uh, something that is too much for Amazon to come back from. With that, uh, Oriana is well locked in in the middle lane. We're going to see uh, the uh, Pantheon uh, jumping into the middle of the team here, either with that ultimate or just with that gap close. And that Oriana ball is going to be able to be thrown on him used as, of course, the infamous ball delivery system as we spoke of last game, and hopefully be able to get off um, some very big AoE ultimates from Oriana here, especially as the game goes on. But again, what we're looking to see primarily is whether or not this Jinx can get ahead, whether or not this Pantheon can get ahead. If Jinx can get ahead, well, I mean, that spells doom. I mean, this is a matchup where Jinx shouldn't be able to get ahead very easily. Sivir should be able to bully Jinx very strong in lane here. Be able to shove those waves in very quickly, create a lot of pressure. And, you know, that is why I might expect to see another lane swap coming out of this Workday team. Again, it did work last game here, uh, though the blue side, of course, will be a bit more keen to it now that they experienced it last game with a similar composition. Of course, that Jinx and Maokai, again, uh, snatched up for this workday team. Would not be surprised to see that coming out again here, and I do not believe that uh, Hamzon would be either. In a quick moment during the lull in the action, I want to say hello, Peter Beach. Uh, welcome, welcome to chat. Greetings, traveler. Uh, hope you're having a good time, all my live streamers. Hope you're having a great time. Uh, hanging out in chat. Again, this is game three of this series. Uh, it all comes down to this. Now in a best of one. Uh, whoever pulls out the victory now will proceed in the After Hours Gaming League to the semi-finals. Or excuse me. No, yes. The semi-finals uh, next week. You know, again, when I was speaking with the captains for these two teams uh, earlier this week, Workday did say, you know, that Jinx, if they can get Jinx on their team, they can get uh, an opportunity for her to get farmed up, to start to hit her stride, to get a couple kills here and there around around the map during some team fights, accelerate her into that late game. They feel confident they can beat anybody with that Jinx. The question is whether or not she's going to be shut out. If Jinx gets shut out and slowed down, that acceleration gets stopped. She's going to be a non-factor during the mid-game. And again, that is where Amazon Amazon really shines here. So I would not be surprised to see Gragas paying a lot of attention to whichever lane uh, Jinx ends up in here. Whether it's a lane swap or not. I would not be surprised to see that Gragas rotated around wherever Jinx goes. Because shutting her down is going to be very critical. I mean, of course, shutting Pantheon down is going to be very critical as well. But that's a little tricky to do. Um, it's going to be more of uh, trying to play a little bit safer here. And, of course, 
looking at the composition as well, this, this is a team that can play safer against Pantheon. Cho'Gath, not the fastest champion, but does have that AoE silence uh, for if Orianna tries to come in with a lot of follow-up damage to Pantheon. Uh, it does have that Q, which can be used to force a disengagement if you use that to zone properly. Sivir with that spell shield. Janna, the queen of disengage, going to be a fairly safe lane there. And Mundo, a little bit more vulnerable, especially pre-6 Mundo. Perhaps the most vulnerable lane right now for this Amazon team. But Mundo, of course, always has the opportunity to farm from long range with those cleavers. If he feels a little uncomfortable, if this team isn't sure where Pantheon is in the jungle, if they're not sure, hey, is this Pantheon uh, looking to farm up early uh, to hit an item break and then gank a lane, or is he going to try and do some earlier ganks, Mundo can just let that wave push to him. Malkai, of course, will have that in mind too. <laughs> Certainly not be looking to spam his abilities to shove in a Mundo. I uh, want to keep that Mundo as vulnerable as possible uh, before he hits 6. But, I mean, Mundo doesn't shove the lane if he doesn't want to. And Mundo, of course, goes where he pleases, so he can shove that lane right up to the turret and hang out there if he wants. But he will put himself a little bit more vulnerable to that Pantheon, and the only way he has to get out is that uh, slow from the Cleavers to try and walk away there. Of course, with that Ghost, he will be able to walk away fairly speedily, uh, but we'll see if uh, that's going to be enough to keep him safe here. As we see uh, the, the workday hype in chat here. Move some of these around really quick here. Alright, there we go. Uh, standard items coming out. Oh, a pause right off the bat here. So we're going to wait just for a moment. Uh, standard items picked up so far, of course, the flask for that Maokai, the Mundo, uh, with that Doran shield for that extra health early on. Uh, just a little bit of survivability, of course, with the passive of that Doran shield as well. Always nice to have on that Mundo. Uh, always nice to have on a top laner in general, really. Alright, and we do see the play resuming now. Getting back into that, so the ping's already called out on the map for this Amazon team here, looking for... Uh, some defensive positioning here on the blue side, or excuse me, uh, on the red side of their jungle. Perhaps predicting an invade, looking to try and catch us out, and Gragas will be spotting this out again. He does, of course, see them coming in, and as again, Mundo throwing that cleaver out, knowing they're there, able to slow them down, make sure nothing too insane happens, throw down a ward himself, actually opting to not clear out that ward, looking for some kills, Pantheon does jump up to stun somebody, but taking so much damage already, and the fight is broken out, the level 1 carnage, this is a game 3 if I've ever seen one here, and that will be the flashes, and the Sivir Boomerang picks up the first blood, let's jump back one moment here to keep an eye on the action. As we see that Oriana going solo, flashing Sivir, beautiful shot there, just having no fear, knowing exactly where that Oriana would flash you. And that's going to be the first blood onto Sivir. Not what you want to see if you're this workday team here. This is exactly what you needed to avoid. Going to force the flash as well from Maokai, but there's so much slow from the business coming out. Unfortunately, that kill does go over to the Jan, Jan auto attacks confirmed OP. But the Mundo giving them the business, <laughs> and that is going to be two kills to start this off with a 1k gold deficit. First blood onto Sivir. And wow, I mean, that is gotta hurt for this workday team here. They do not want the whole strategy here uh, was to make sure that they could get a matchup where this Amazon Amazon team didn't spiral out of control. 
And starting off with uh, an invade they, uh, they uh, facilitated here going that horribly wrong. I mean, that's so painful to see. It's really going to be up to these laners for the Workday team now to really prove themselves. And hey, you know, we, we played a little bit uh, uh, in situations where things haven't necessarily worked out as favorably as possible for us. I mean, Workday, uh, again, speaking with them earlier this week, as Thresh looks for this hook here, you should be able to land it. Uh, but I'm not sure how much damage is going to be followed up. No W yet available for that Oriana. Oh, almost stolen away is the blue buff. Janna being as much of a pest as possible. Jinx, of course, does get her lane swap here as Thresh, after trying to create that pressure in the 2v1 lane, will eventually roam back up to that top side. Mundo does need to be a little careful here. Jinx, not necessarily with the highest kill pressure onto a Mundo, uh, but <laughs> Janna stepping forward, getting those auto attacks in. Oh. I'll always love to see that filthy proc as much as possible in that early game. Um, but yes, uh, we we do need to see uh, whether or not these laners can handle this. Uh, as I've heard from the Workday team, uh, they're very comfortable in situations where they lose kills early on and come back. You know, that's a style they're used to playing with. Of course, they would prefer to have a game like Game 2 where they don't give up kills early and just spiral out of control themselves. Uh, but they aren't uh, unfamiliar with playing from behind, and they are very comfortable with doing so. So if they can... Uh, Maokai taking so much damage from that harassment from Sivir there. Um, if they can really show their proficiency in this game of playing from behind, I mean, again, that 1k gold lead from the start of the game, that's that's very painful to deal with, you know, it's going to take a lot of uh, discipline to handle properly. And if they can really do so, this will be a very earned victory here. Uh, proof of concept that they don't need to go insane at the start. They can handle themselves even if they get a bit of a failed invade. And if, you know, if you're gonna wanna make it to the finals of AHGL, you've gotta be able to uh, handle any situation. The th beautiful hero minion from the caster minion there, saving that Mundo from the hook. Uh, but yeah, if you're going to go for those sort of more riskier starts, like those invades, to try and get that deep vision, to try and secure your lane swap, you need to be able to handle yourselves if it goes wrong. If the enemy team knows it's coming, they uh, prepare for it, and they can react accordingly. Well, I thought the she does step forward to avoid the first Cho'Gaf cube, but that's not going to be enough as the flash from the fat man is going to be able to body slam himself into a kill for that Shogath. And looking at the CS disparities already. Actually going aggressive as Mountcat with bit off way more than he can chew. The return mounting blade not gonna be enough. Gonna make it out with sub 20 hit points. Wow, Janna not able to flash there. The flash not available. Definitely would have gone for that flash auto for the hero Janna play, but not gonna have it uh, open to her, so Malkai barely gonna make it out alive there. And this absolutely does not seem like a team that we saw in the previous game where they were able to uh, dominate that uh, early and mid game. It seems like they're really gonna have an uphill battle here. You know, again, 2k gold doesn't sound like much, but when it's 2k gold at sub six minutes in the game, Certainly painful. Um, this Jinx and Thresh doing their absolute best to poke, poke this Mundo out as much as possible. Try and force him to be zoned. Create a little bit of balance uh, for the situation with Maokai in their lane swap here. The CS largely even between those two. Thus far, Thresh actually thinking of two turret states there. As we see Cho'Gath now with that feast available, going to be starting up those stacks as quickly as possible. Trying to get as tanky as he can, opting to go for the catalyst first there for a little extra sustain in lane. Make sure nothing insane happens with that Oriana.
You know, this is just a very unfortunate turn of events for this workday team here. As we show you, who these butts to harass down, harass down, not Orion, I should say. Um, but yeah, this is just such an unfortunate turn of events with that Pantheon. I mean, this is somebody who particularly looks to be in lane as much as possible. Try and harass people down, camp people out, get their lanes ahead. I mean, even if he's able to pull off a successful gank once or twice, I would just even up the lanes at this point. And that's not what Pantheon needs. Pantheon needs lanes he can go to to snowball himself off of the assists. And, I mean, when your team is this far behind, uh, it's going to be a struggle to get them back into this. And again, you know, three kills isn't the end of the world by any means. But when you're uh, in a position where those two of those kills were, uh, every champion has at least two kills they participate in. Most of them have three. That gold distribution is so lopsided in every lane. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just a nightmare to have to deal with at this point. See that Q not going to be able to land this time from Shogath here. So good de defensive play so far from that Oriana opting to go for the double Doran's ring uh, to get a little bit more survivability in the landing phase here. Going to get that slow on a Shogath should be able to land the CC from the thrush, especially if he's going that way. Oh no! Flashes into the tip of the hook. Does miss that Q as well. So that is going to be a very successful roam there. From uh, lag hack, from that uh, support on this workday team, that's going to be very helpful here. Of course, Cho'Gath with that flash feast is something that you have to be very respectful of. All that true damage coming out, you gotta worry that Oriana. But now that the flash is down, you're gonna have a lot more safety in that laning phase to be able to farm up and not be too concerned about Cho'Gath. But of course, that does mean that they're going to off to go for that dragon scene again. His top lane is still up here, trying to beat down that Mundo, but Mundo, with that ultimate now available, not gonna worry about it at all. They will get the timer off that scene, the Mundo get enchanted with that dragon stack. Well, this is again, unlike last game, no turret traded yet for that dragon. And Mundo doing his best to fend them off of this top turret. He is hooked up here. Yeah, this is quite a bit of damage, but again, do not be deceived before that ultimate is available. Maokai is the one who's really in trouble here, as he does go down, and that is another kill onto this Sivir. 4-0. Is this Hamazon team here, as they're going to look to shove into this bot lane as well, so... Despite getting this turn in the top lane, We'll see if uh, there's a response, and in fact there shall be. So, no dragon trade for turret here, just a trade turret for turret. And that, you know, that is certainly a trade that uh, Workday is comfortable making at this point. They're just looking for ways to even up this gold as much as possible here. So trading and turret one for one, uh, especially in a position that's favorable uh, for them something they're going to be fine with, but unfortunately uh, this is not that situation, you know, losing that bottom lane turret earlier in the game can you create too much uh, too much opportunity for deep vision to come out here to uh, out position people in their jungle to get those deep wards, and I mean we already see for Hamzong looking at uh, this part of the jungle those deep rewards coming out already, so Seeing that happening, Amazon, Amazon has sort of put the second game out of their mind. They know uh, they're focused on what happened this game. They're ready to adapt to this situation. And now that they've got a lead, they're going to do what Amazon, Amazon does best. They're going to capitalize on that lead. They're going to make sure they get ahead and stay ahead here in this mid game. Now, any fights around the dragon are to be uh, highly cautious for this workday team, because again, that is entering Amazon's wheelhouse here. So we know who be giving this Malkai the business. Lots of damage coming out. The Thresh Lantern gonna save him, but that's just a 
show how strong the lead is at this point in the game for this Amazon team. Maokai at half his life jumps out by a Mundo. I mean, that's so, so impressive. It speaks to the amount of power that they have. Pantheon hanging in the wings here, looking for an opportunity to use that Grand Skyfall. I mean, all of them are grouped up here. If they get to the turret, they can look for an opportunity uh, to fight this out. We do see the teleport coming in from Mundo. Here comes the Skyfall. Not gonna land on anybody. Uh, that is a beautiful belly slam. And that's a good hook on Mundo as well, but not the target they want. So squishy at this point in the game are these members. They do get the Mundo first. But then immediately lose that Malkai. And the barrel gets two. Beautiful shot there from Gragas. Overall a four for one. And this looks like the Amazon Amazon team we all know. As soon as those team fights start to break out at the very start of the mid game, they use that advantage they somehow always manage to create in the early game. And they begin the spiral out of control. Eight and one now are the kills. And this will be three and one as far as turrets are concerned. The only dragon of the game going over to Amazon. And just like that, the gold lead has become a nearly 6k gold lead. 5.5k right now in favor of Amazon. Only a single kill on that Pantheon, of course, perhaps the most critical at this point in the game. Uh, absolutely reliant on those uh, early power uh, spikes to make sure that he can remain relevant into the mid game and hopefully the late game as well. So not the worst person to have that kill onto by any means, but to have him as the only kill. There's a good hook onto that Shogath, a lot of damage coming out. Maokai, even with the ultimate running, chunked out so hard here. Looking to possibly be a ball delivery system, but it's going to take the uh, uh, lantern out. A lot of damage on Sivir. Somehow Sivir survives. Cannot believe that she survived that. So much damage on a Gragas though. That will be Gragas going down. There's a kill on the Oriana. There's a flash board on Oriana, and there's the trade there. As a shutdown bull coming off of Chilgat there, gonna definitely be helping out this team get back into the game here. You know, with that uh, Rod of Ages completed just now for Chilgat, with a lot of gold spent on this back, off of those kills rather, I mean, seeing 8 and 1 in that score obviously moves you forward, wanting to try and press your advantage, try and get those kills. But if you don't uh, take the time to back and invest that gold into an item, that's just a number sitting there on your screen. You know, it's not actually something that uh, creates a decided advantage. Now that they've spent these items, the next team fight, of course, is going to be much more hotly, uh, le much less hotly contested, I should say. Uh, and should be well into Amazon's corner. But perhaps overstaying when they could have backed and spent some gold, got some stacks uh, working on that Rod of Ages. You know, got uh, some uh, earlier tankiness built up sooner on that Mundo. Have those team fights break out uh, and only at favorable times for you. I mean, you're dictating the pace here as Amazon Amazon in this game right now. You still have the 3.5k gold lead. You still have the turret advantage. Albeit only by one at this point, but still uh, a turret advantage in your favor. So definitely make force that issue. Make them play your game right now. That's a beautiful hook onto the server, but unfortunately Chogas right there. Definitely not going to be an engagement they want to take here. The shield does block out most of that damage. There's the Feast Ignite! Decimating that threat. The Chompers trying to peel for Oriana, but not going to be enough, unfortunately. Uh, being an AD carry, not the best uh, ability to peel for another carry on our team. That's going to be a uh, two kills there coming out, and probably a dragon here. The Pantheon does have smite available, but going to 
definitely think better of hopping into those four members, especially when Mundo has that teleport available. He's gonna have to give up that second dragon. And again, you know, we see a possibility right now for the team fight starting to go uh, creep into that position where it might not necessarily be super one-sided. Uh, despite obviously those kills being heavily in favor of Sivir in that ADC comparison, uh, Jinx technically has the item advantage right now. So if they can find an opportunity here, I, I, that's why I don't necessarily dislike this uh, choice to fight. And there's a beautiful ultimate there! They do catch out the Janna! Beautiful shot there with the Jinx Zap! Exactly what they needed there. They do need to be cautious right now, but there's the Grand Skyfall keeping them in their area, but does get feasted down this Maokai. But there's the damage, lots of damage. Jinx getting those resets, and there will be no second reset there from Jinx, but that is a 3 for 1 overall. And now living up to their reputation of feed and somehow still win. Workday looking to make the most out of this. Cho'Gath coming in, looking to try and get damage. That does force the heal out of Jinx. A lot of damage though. Cho'Gath needs to be careful here. Thresh does flash hook and that's another kill. Those stacks absolutely mowed down now. Good shot from the zap there, but it is spell shielded by Sivir. And wow, just like that, uh, that's what was needed for this workday team here. That gold lead shrunk, absolutely shrunk right now. Down to, I mean, it sounds funny to say, but down to uh, more around 4k. If they can continue to punish again, as we were saying during that fight, Sivir actually, despite obviously being ahead of Jinx overall, did not have that invested in items. Jinx actually had the item advantage at the outbreak of that fight. And that seems to be what's happening with this hands-on team here. They're, they're not going back when they have the opportunity to do so to press their new item advantage. They don't do so, they stay. They try and get a little bit more kills find a little bit more opportunity to press an advantage a little bit deeper and while it's certainly something you want to do while you're ahead if you do that it opens up an opportunity that maybe you're overextending a little bit here maybe there's a little bit of a misplay opportunity or a catch potential for this workday team and again it's not like these uh this workday team is someone to not be taken seriously here as we see that gorgeous baron animation as he jumps around here beautiful um but yeah, they, the reason they got out of control and never let up in that last game is they know how to punish. You know, they will absolutely take any inch you give them and turn it into a mile, so. Looking to do that here, and again, those evening up that gold leaves is what they need to do right now. Lots of wards coming out around this Baron. I do have to question that heavy investment, though. I doubt there's going to be uh, a Baron take right now. Mundo does bring vision on the rest of the team here. This red buff being contested. Lots of damage coming out right now. Jinx wailing away in the back lines. Valkai right in the thick of things, though. Lots of damage coming onto him. The Thresh not able to get around, but that's a three man. Orianna ultimate, but there's the AoE silence on the four people from Cho'Gath. Beautiful flash silence from Cho'Gath. Worth his weight in gold right now, and that is a huge champion. That is a lot of gold. Oh my goodness gracious, that was beautiful camera play. Again, a three-man Oriana ultimate was great. And all of a sudden, I got hyped. I was like, oh my gosh, is this that moment? Is there going to be another engagement that works out in uh, the favor of this Workday team? But no, the Cho'Gath, Hero Cho'Gath, no hesitation, flash in, AoE silence, stop whatever follow-up was coming. And then all of a sudden, this team able to follow up here follow that Shogath in and create that huge advantage for them in that team fight. And now the gold lead reset to what it was minutes ago. Shogath very, very threatening on that fresh there. 
Smash Molly gonna take it. That's a lot of damage from Jinx and she does get him. That's another kill. Again, staying a little bit too long, trying to take uh, some jungle camps on the way out. Workday not letting themselves fall through uh, in a defeatist mentality here. Even after they do, uh, I mean, that's the flash silence from Choga. That's just a symptom of being behind that much in the game right now. There's nothing you can do about that. They don't let it get to them. They say, okay, whatever, you've got the kill there. You're, you're a team that has been, so far this game, getting those kills, getting those advantages, and then not using them properly. So we're going to punish you. We're going to respawn. We're going to come diving into our own jungle, and we're going to get you. We're going to knock those Cho'Gath stacks off. And again, that is absolutely critical. Looking at Cho'Gath for just a moment here, he is back down to three stacks. So, I mean, cutting those stacks in half, that's so helpful to prevent this team from spiraling out of control. That is by far one of the largest spiral mechanics on this team. Uh, perhaps second only to Mundo, who's just looking to stack as much health as possible to. But if they can continue to get those kills on a Cho'Gath, continue to keep him uh, with a smaller number of stacks, he'll be more easy to kill. Uh, he won't be able to be that huge frontline tank. Of course, when you have Mundo and Gragas, it's not like you need him to be the hugest frontline tank for your team. But if he's your, like, damage mage for the team and seeing that he's going for that Zonias, for that death cap, he's going a more damage Cho'Gath build here. Uh, not as off tank as we see a lot of Cho'Gaths go. So, of course, going mid lane with Cho'Gath, that is far more common to bring that damage out. But if you can keep him on those low feast stacks, that means he's going to be a lot more vulnerable here. He's going to be a lot more killable. And if you can kill that Cho'Gath, you can prevent him, uh, or even just, if you can not necessarily kill him, but if you can keep him from having those stacks get too far out of control, you can keep him in a killable range, so when he tries to flash in and get a feast on you, he's going to be very vulnerable. And as we saw the action here, breaking out. Beautiful uh, ultimate from that Gragas. Unfortunately, that Oriana ultimate only on Mundo. Absolutely not the person you want to be ulting. And that's going to cost them the turret here. Sixth third of the game. Going over to this Amazon team. <laughs> the choke, uh, the hook from uh, Thresh there, forcing the uh, spell shield out from Sivir at the last moment. Unfortunately, hook just out of range. Uh, might have actually got to Sivir before that uh, spell shield went up, but now we see uh, taking that turret, leaving some wards on their path out, and going back to buy. That's exactly what this Amazon team needs to do right now. You need to go back, invest that gold they just got, keep their lead substantial, make sure the next team fight that breaks out they still have as much of a lead. Chogath looking for a sneaky attack here. He does land that, and there's the full combo with that in the ignite. That's going to be a kill on a Chogath. So much damage output from Chogath. Okay, actually looking to be caught out here. That is uh the slow being brought out from the Janna. Gonna be enough to keep him in range, make sure he goes down, and now that's two members just being caught out. And that is uh not something that they can allow on this work they team here. I mean just trying to be out in their own lanes right now is no longer safe. And I mean it sucks, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, but you just have to sort of accept that and seed some things, you know? Uh, otherwise, you're going to allow an opportunity uh, for this Amazon team to do what they're doing right now, where they force you to seed even more. They take those, they punish you for those kills, and they take that turret. Now the base, I mean, being compromised at this stage in the game. Something, again, that this Workday team cannot afford to do. So see, looking very briefly just at the map, so many deep wards here for this Amazon team. And a lot of 
uh, defensive words coming out as well for this team uh, on the red side, but you know, there's a limit to what you can do. The three sweepers already out, two of them upgraded at this point. This battle of vision. Absolutely one that uh, Amazon is playing right now. Again, beautiful open on the Maokai, but that's a great ultimate from Oriana. Just not enough damage at this point. Oriana, not with that death cap to see. It does have that uh, penetration. But here's the silver ultimate. There's the flash from Cho. That's the Q into the feast. Gonna be enough of that jinx going down as well. Thresh trying to be a hero, throwing down the box. Giving himself a little extra shield here. That will be the middle lane inhibitor going down. It looks like gonna play it safe as Hamazon. Gonna just fall back here. Possibly go to that uh, Baron. As we see, starting to get demoralized here. Uh, is the workday team. Thinking that they possibly could have finished there. Amazon definitely going to play it safe though. Game 3, you're taking in the quarterfinals. Last thing you want to do is think you can beat some respawn timers. Overextend a little bit. Get ace and then give up the Baron. That's definitely the safer play here. Going to draw things out a little bit longer but... Jinx ultimate not coming out quick enough there. Fortunately that Baron long gone. You see the heartbreak in the gleam. Um, you know, right now Amazon hanging out there. We see, of course, uh, the red pot on the silver here. Taking their time, taking the Baron buff, uh, setting up for their dragon, their, what would be their fourth dragon of the game to make sure even if something does go wrong, they can always contest a fifth dragon. Absolutely shut out of dragons this game uh, is the workday team. There comes the Righteous Glory. Not able to find Jinx, but they are able to find Maokai, who again is surprisingly squishy at this stage in the game. Not looking to press for anything. Want to get this bottom lane, but unfortunately the minions pushing so heavily against them right now. That is buying a lot of time for the Workaday team, both bot and top lane, pushing so hard on their own right now. Uh, that will be a little bit of invasion going on. Picking up that blue jungle uh, camp. Well, red jungle camp would be a blue buff, as it were. See the defensive ward still coming out from this workday team here. Not going to go down without a fight. They are 12k behind at this point, but if they can find a way to cap some people out, delay this fight as long as possible, they might be able to find a way to come back into this game. I certainly would have put, wouldn't put it past them. If there's a team that can do it, it is them. They are going to have to give up the spot lane Ember though. With so many Baron up minions, absolutely no way they can test, can contest this. Unfortunately, Mundo, having brought that wave with him into the top lane, they're simply going to rotate around, try and take this top lane turret. Actually, boldly going to go through the base. Just challenging workday here. This is Amazon saying, hey, you know, come, we're in your base. This is our base now. If you want to defend these turrets, you come and get us. Now, Pat, throwing up the ultimate. You can twist and advance onto the Choga. So much damage already. The Oriana ultimate doesn't land onto any of the squishies. Jinx doing her best. Lots of damage here. Actually, Jinx putting in a lot of work there with those ranged rockets, but in the end, not going to be enough. No, she does get the shutdown onto Chogath as well. Trying to dodge out that sneaky ghost, but only able to do so much. Jinx, wow, the crit coming out from that uh, 80 carry and Sivir. 
doing absolutely massive work and with so much damage from that Oriana QW. They might actually be able to defend here. Thresh with those uh, home guards looking pretty scary, but at the same time not afraid. Actually, Sivir, the flash, not going to be enough. All of a sudden, here comes the Grand Skyfall. The Janna, too much disengaged though. Mundo able to throw out the business, but here's the Maokai. The backs, not going to be enough. Janna trying to channel as long as possible, but will be tied down here. Mundo going to try and give this Maokai the business, is able to do so. That speed up coming out from Moriana. The flash actually going to save Janna's life here. The great escape from Mundo and Janna going to be pulled out. And that is a defense here from this workday team. Now mid lane inhibitor has respawned, so there will not be double super minions coming out any longer. But with that four dragons to none, perhaps an even more concerning proposition is drawing here. Iron Sheep's so tanky at this point in the game right now. So much health built up. We're gonna go for that War Mogs next as well. Get the absolute most out of that single Vulcan. Can't be on this Diamond Spade. Beautiful ultimate, just chunk out. Oriana getting so deep into the game now that she's doing so much damage even onto the tanky members. Unfortunately, again, not the members she wants, but the members she will take. And as that. Uh, fight breaks out here. Jinx forced to run away so low, not able to do the consistent DPS like we've seen in the other fights where they've suddenly turned around in the favor. And that boomerang will finish her off. Double kill on the Sivir, barely dodging out the base laser, but that is going to be the game in the end. Finally closed out by Amazon Hams on a very scrappy finish of the game, fighting as you would expect a team. Uh, with their championship hopes on the line here, uh, was, of course, workday. But in the end, not able to pull it out. Amazon, Amazon, too much of a lead in the early game. Uh, not able to be answered. And that's going to be the game going over to Amazon, Amazon, as they are promoted into the quarterfinals next week. Looking briefly at these scores... Cho'Gath came, came up very strong in this game. Uh, again, 13, 4, and 10. The stacks, he was able to soak up so much damage with uh, almost no resistances, just a bit of armor built. Uh, he was taking a lot of damage, relying very much on those stacks. And despite four deaths, they were not able to keep him down enough to make him squishy enough for uh, his positioning in the front line to be punished. Uh, Mundo, of course... Hit his stride there, went insane with that War Mogs. Uh, Sivir, 11, 1, and 13. Uh, again, just another demonstration of another champion for Amazon Amazon in the AD carry position that uh, just isn't answered, is just destroyed here. Uh, or just destroys, rather. <laughs> um, and, you know, I mean, this is Janna again. 1, 2, and 22. So proficient on Janna uh, is the support here. Looking at the score uh, damage rolls for a moment as well. 33k damage on Sivir. Uh, certainly was answered by that Oriana putting out a lot of damage uh, with those ultimates, but the game just didn't hit late enough. They were so close. Jinx had almost four items completed with the boots. Oriana had her core three items completed. Uh, especially with that um, ability to do a lot of damage to that Mundo to counteract all that healing he does. But it just they just couldn't hang on long enough. It was so close. They were almost at a point where they could start to stem the tide, I would say, of this wave that became Amazon Amazon. But at the end of the day, they just simply weren't able to do it. And that's going to be the game going over to Amazon Amazon, who will... Proceed in game three into the next uh, round next week here in the After Hours Gaming League. Uh, I hope 
uh, that the streamers who are watching this are not having the same problems I have. I don't know what the issue is with this stream. It uh, is absolutely terrible quality and keeps loading. But for those of you who are watching later afterwards, thank you for watching. Of course, you can go to the lovely website on your screen here, AfterHoursGaming.tv, to see all the casts, all the schedules for your favorite teams, who they're going to be coming up against next week. And to my lovely streamers, thank you for watching live. Of course, we will have a game later today at 3 o'clock. Uh, that will be between... Let me pull that up really quickly. Between Microsoft One and Facebook at Feed Story. Uh, and for those of you who are watching the recording, feel free to check that match out as well. All these matches that I will cast will be uploaded to this YouTube channel. So feel free to stay tuned here. Subscribe if you want to stay tuned. Uh, stay in touch with all the games I am casting every Sunday for the After Hours Gaming League. Thank you for watching. I hope you had a great time. Uh, enjoy the rest of your lovely day.